Hello, hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm an Illumins Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. How are you today? Today I want to talk to you about some of the things that this energy is bringing. So here we are post-eclipse, and this eclipse was for shutting the door on a lot of karmic patterns. Now, the actual door to karma closed officially in 2010. It hasn't stopped people from trying to, you know, get the karma out of their system, but it's going to be getting out big time this year. So pay attention here, people, because I want to tell you only some of the things that are coming up now, because this represents some of the foundation and the basics that you need for your physical union. So this energy, um, first of all, you know, the energy that we're in, it's always about love. But this is going to be a little bit of tough love, that tough love that starts to push out things that you don't want, but really in earnest. You may have thought that you pushed some things out last year or two years ago. And it's going to, like, really ramp up for people. You're going to feel like the accelerator puts the pedal to the metal, and you might not be sure what is going on. What is going on is that there is more than just a physical union and there is more than just a metaphysical union. So for people where that's your comfort zone, where it's okay to just linger around in the metaphysics of it and say, you know, I, I have great contact with my twin, we're tele telepathic all the time, you know, I get this it's going to start to take a nosedive because unless you know how to ramp it up and raise the bar, you're going to be lost in it. I'm not saying that to disturb you or upset you because a lot of people do get in a comfort zone and you're staying at that level. You're intended to be at this level, okay? And there was a transition period and that transition period is going to be tough for some people. You're hearing it here first. So, you know, when you see things that are saying, well, the masculine is throwing away their karmic patterns. Here's what I'm here to do is to clarify some of this for you. First of all, you two share things. And a big piece of what comes out are childhood issues. But not just childhood issues like you got picked on as a child. This is you as the cosmic level child. Because, yeah, you've been a child in other places. You've been affected by events, and if it's not you, it's your twin. And a lot of people don't have that perspective because they haven't been able to see their past lives or see what's happened on purpose. Because if you were to see things, that too would probably distract you. There's already a lot of things that do distract a lot of people. Some people go off and running in this direction. And I actually said that to myself early on. I said, you know, people love their twin. Where's the other one? Where's the other person? And I found them. They were looking at other kinds of, you know, videos and sites and, you know, ancient astronauts and uh, stuff about the cosmology and ancient civilizations. And a lot of people do great work in those areas and arenas of our, you know, total social spectrum here. But how does it help when you're here to be lovers? Okay. And the same thing happens with other people. They get kind of, you know, into this and into that, and they want to do it that way, and that's their comfort zone. What does it matter if one of you comes in from this direction and the other one comes in from this direction if you have a distinct convergence point? Those convergence points are for this year. Those convergence points are for this year. And there's been a lot that's gone in to make it successful. First of all, you have a new body. You have channels that connect only to each other. I know how to get those open. I know about the body. I've been writing about it for years. My material is good. It's excellent, in fact, and it's all formatted and ready for you. What does this have to do with? It has to do with your heart. It has to do with clearing things out on a level that you may not even remember, and most definitely your twin doesn't remember. And further, you wouldn't want them to remember because... They would get all hung up on that. We want to keep it focused. So, yeah, there's been like some blinders on people like a horse has so that they keep, you know, putting one foot in front of the other. Not blindly, but with what they feel. They verge this way, it's going to be like boom, and they go this way, and it's going to be like boom. 
very narrow. It's narrowing it down and you have the homing beacon here in your heart. This is why all that poetry that says, be a light in the darkness. You're being a light for your own lover. Not for everybody else, although that does happen. For your own lover. This is about being lovers again. So a couple of things to let you know about. Childhood issues, things from other lives are going to be coming out big time. Now, in adults, this is going to play out differently than in children and teens. This is going to be where ego as a part of you, and we're not talking about the mind, we're not talking about people being arrogant. We are talking about ego is there to protect you when the other parts of you are not. You haven't always been in lines with each other. You haven't always been able to have a say-so. And sometimes it's been right down to your basic survival and danger. Okay, Then you bring that person in this life and you want them to instantaneously know everything. It doesn't happen that way. It actually doesn't even work that way. They have to be gradually brought up and you have to wake them up inside. That's how this works. Like that song, wake me up inside, wake me up inside. Okay, that's what you have to do. If you do not know how to do that and you're just talking to a part of them that you're perceiving as ego, then you're going to get the reactive responses that ego has. So I just want to remind people of that. Some of the other aspects, childhood issues. Are you part of any, and they say this in quotes, eternal love triangle? How many times have these things been repeated in lifetime after lifetime? The unrequited love, the dead lover, the duels, the fighting over each other, the fighting and the fornicating and the fighting and the fornicating, okay? How many times has this been a part of people's childhood issues? They may not know who their mother is or their father is. And sometimes this isn't even a love triangle. This is some interloper that has come in into your life or an invader or somebody worse, okay? These kind of childhood issues. So post-eclipse, it's the ending of karma and karmic patterns. A lot of these have played in your relationships to date. There has been neglect. Neglect of what? Well, neglect of your emotional, spiritual, psychological, and sometimes physical needs, or Maybe some people get their physical needs met or they take their physical needs and yet they don't get the other parts of them met. They have patterns of relationship where they get their emotional needs met, then there's a person at work that nurtures them, then there's this, then there's church, and then there's the sex department of their lives. And everything's in these boxes and compartments. I actually uh, read an article on Cora the other day, and the man was talking about some of these very things, but he didn't know he was talking or that we were coming to the end of it post-eclipse. But here's how the article went. The article went like this. Some people date for a while, they get together, they're all lovey-dovey, then they get married, and then they get into their intimate moments if they've waited. Well, in his case, he got into a situation where the woman he had dated and loved and she was a sweet person, the minute he went to touch her, her abuse issues all came to the surface and she turned into a stranger. How many times does this happen? It happens a lot more than you realize. Now, once the wedding ring is on, what do people do? Say, hey, I married someone with all this baggage I didn't even know was there. I, I want a refund. I want to turn them back. Well, for some of you, this is your twin. For some of you, your twin is getting out what they can by being triggered by other soulmates and the entire universe, actually. Remember this. The entire universe can trigger things out whenever it's needed. It's not going to be the twin. In fact, it will be less and less frequent that the twin is actually triggering things and it will be more and more of the world and everything because it has to get out. 
your, oh, your channels and your high heart will not sustain those things. So what was he supposed to do? Well, he worked with it and he researched it and he found out and little by little, like coaxing a wild horse, he, you know, they got to a working agreement in their marriage. That's not what you're here for. You're not here for that kind of old school marriage. I'll give you another one. There was a uh, article I saw. Now, mind you, these are relationships. I'm not saying if it is or isn't the twin flame. So these are distinctly relationship patterns. Someone saw the boyfriend from years ago come up on, you know, social media. Brought a flood of feelings because what had he done? He had cheated on her. And yet, as this brought things up and it triggered out stuff from the past, she started to process it. She felt sick to her stomach. She got headaches. She laid awake at night and she was confused because as an older person, once she started processing, she was, start, she was able to put it in perspective. And the perspective was this. She started to remember the good things. And this is what time does when it heals your wounds. It helps you remember the good, all of your good takeaways, okay? That is what this post-eclipse energy is doing. It's the ending of karma, knowing that you don't have to repeat those patterns and have all your good takeaways from any relationship or civilization or living, but it goes further. When she really started processing this, she started to understand, he helped me. How could a person who cheated on you help you? This is where we get into the nuances, okay? And how these levels of healing go. She had been abused as a child. The boyfriend was very gentle and patient. He took his time and these were her takeaways. She felt safe. She was able to allow herself to be touched and not panic and not seize up and go into her old patterns, her old karmic patterns. Did he take her virginity? Yes, he did. But he was probably the best candidate for it because he was patient and loving and kind and gentle and he made it a wonderful experience for her. And that's what she remembered. She remembered his gentility and kindness. It wasn't a F for her. It wasn't just something hidden in a back room. It was something where she was able to get in touch with a part of herself that wasn't there for a long time. So when your other parts are not, when you have only ego to protect you, yeah, you can seem like a wild animal. You can seem like an abused person. You can seem like someone that needs coaxing. You might want to turn to drugs or alcohol, okay? But when the other parts of you, because we're ending karma, can start to come into place, that's the game changer, ladies and gentlemen. That's the thing that all of these lives of neglect, feeling excluded, withdrawal of affection, and downright, you know, things that hurt you, uh, that have left wounds and scars on you. You know, I always find scars to be interesting because they always have a story. They have much more of a story, but we don't see everyone's scars, of course. But it's sometimes in those moments that those things come up. But you're here to be lovers. So you're here to reverse those effects. You're here as lovers who are eternal and eternally want to help each other. What, what happened to you? Hang on. I'm going to go into a meditation about it. Okay. Not, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to go get my weapon and I'm going to go do something. Those days are gone. No weapon can be used here. Not word weapons, not physical weapons. Not our private parts as weapons, not our minds as weapons. Love.
the heart. So this is another thing I want to let you know. This is a time for heart and some of the things that go with it. The heart connections, things that you might feel like heart palpitations, jiggling in your heart, jiggling in your rib cage, shortness of breath, anxious feelings, mild nervousness. What does this all mean? This is what I do and what I know. This is what I help people with. The stomach and the gut issues, the night sweats, um, your reproductive issues, your endocrine issues, teeth and jaw, okay? A lot of the things that are in the upper area and have a lot to do with your heart, okay? So you have a heart chakra. You have a connection to that heart chakra to one person in the entire world. And usually that person is pretty close to you. Close proximity in terms of, you know, advancement and sometimes in physical proximity. So a couple of things that I have for you to help you with this. My webinar, which is pre-recorded, and it is called Daily Living in Multidimensionality. Why? Because you're gearing up here this year to live at two levels. This level and that level, and this level and that level, and this level and that level. You make love and you make a third energy. That energy is made at this level. Then you come to this level. Then you go to this level. And it's not just one of you. You're both going to be doing this with each other. It's not a one-way street. It's not the feminine. So please, I want to mention something here. I've spoken to a lot of men. Men are on board with this. You don't need to make them feel bad. I've had men show up and practically be apologetic and say, I know I'm a man. I know the feminine's carrying their weight, but, you know, I'm here. And I don't know, maybe, okay, we got to stop all this dualistic stuff of the feminine doing, doing, doing. The masculine has been doing a lot, too. And you're going to get to live together, and you will be daily living in multidimensionality with each other. And it is the return of your life. This is the title of it. Daily Living in Multidimensionality, Return of Your Life. And I think I switched it. Return of your life to be daily living in multidimensionality. So that one is in the link down below. Please check it out. There's a pack of information in there. There's two hours of information in there, plus the exercises to get your channels going and to help you clear these areas much easier than you might even realize. So I have some other stories to round out the picture with these karmic patterns, okay? So if we talk about women, women have their levels of, you know, things that don't let them breathe. You know, it's going to be family tension and children and things with the job, and men have theirs. One of the things I was guided to do I, two weeks ago was to go to my local municipal courthouse. Okay, it's what they call the circuit courthouse. So it's the one where, you know, you go for traffic tickets and stuff like that. But you also go to file things. And I was directed to go into the clerk's office, which is where people file civil suits and things like child support cases. So bingo. Okay, childhood issues. That's why I'm talking about it now. There are people that sometimes are trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip and the other person can't breathe. Women pay child support, but men pay child support. Sometimes the laws are tough. You need to support the children, okay? You have people doing the right thing and you have other people that are trying to shirk it, okay? I was there to help loosen, loosen, loosen the grip of this so people can start to breathe and let some things get to another level. That's what I was there for. Okay, so when people go and do their grid work at someplace like Machu Picchu, that's not where I go and do my grid work. You know, I get called to the places that are in the nitty gritty to like, you know, start this stuff to move. That's what Blu-rays do, okay? And if you don't know about grid work, that's in a whole different webinar, but we will be talking about it. I have another webinar coming up February 1st or February 3rd. You can pick either day that's a Friday or a Sunday. 
whichever one works for your schedule. So what happened was with the court is that, you know, we're kind of trying to bring this stuff to more of a sense of balance. Okay, not the extreme of deadbeat dads, stepdads, the wrong person around the children, an icky person around the children, an abuser around the children until it's like this, childhood issues. Then you've got the other end of the coin. I know she tricked me. I know she trapped me. I know it's probably not my child, but I'm a good guy. I'm going to do the right thing. And I will raise that son or daughter as my own and see that, see this through. After all, I gave my word. Okay, how do you balance these? You got to loosen the grip. You got to bring it to the center and you got to let people breathe. Because resentments build up here and resentments build up here. Okay, if there's a lot of negativity, I was always taught as a child to pray for our leaders. That's what I was taught. We did that at church, okay? Didn't matter if they were making the right or wrong decisions. The message was, don't send them negativity. Send them the thing that you wish for to happen. Now, for me, that's gone a step further where I'm a being that's capable of doing some of this grid work. I don't pretend to do it all myself because all we need to do is loosen things a bit so that it can start to come back into balance where people aren't chasing people. You think running and chasing just goes on in the twin flame community? Do you ever have to, you know, chase people for other stuff or let them chase you? What does that feel like? Okay. This is some of the things that have happened in past lives with people and it does connect to the ending of karma. So when you're there and you're saying, how is this going to work out? Or my twin has kids and like, what are we going to do? And you're in those financial fears. Fear not. Fear not kind people. Okay. For whatever was not equal cannot be balanced if it was not equal to begin with. Okay. We are equalizing things. That's what equality actually means. We're making things equal without karma, without smacking people in the face with their karmic two by four upside their head. This is a different energy. There's an expectation that people will rise to the challenge and put their best foot forward. So that's the thing that I want to help teach people. I even posted a little silly video on or picture on my Instagram because as I was doing my walks around my neighborhood during the holidays, I noticed that quite a few of the nativity scenes had baby Jesus still there. And, you know, this has been sort of a thing around my neighborhood to, you know, who's going to steal baby Jesus or like people have to hide their baby Jesuses. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know, the moral compass is changing because nobody stole you know, those people, those same old people weren't stealing. So I thought that was a good thing. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. That was my perception. You know, but I've also seen some other great things. Like right now, I mentioned this in my class. You know, we talk a lot in our class, you know, it can be as interactive as you want. But I was talking about some of the great things I was seeing, even though the government is shutting down. I saw an article about grocery stores coming forward with some gift cards for those employees who aren't getting a paycheck and they still need to eat. That's the thing. Daily living in multidimensionality, you still got to eat. You still have to have a place to live. God doesn't want to want you to starve for the sake of love. This is a whole new level and there are expectations that go with it and you should have expectations too. You should have expectations that your basics are fairly easier to meet, okay? Do you have to put your best foot forward? Yes. Do you have to put some energy into it? Yes. Do you have to invest in yourself? Yes. Invest in the things that are going to help you with this. So I get a lot of uh, great movement and shifting for people with just a couple of causal body sessions. I do recommend two to three. But two to three cuts to the chase 
and they're they're done sequentially. They're not done all within three days. They're done sequentially to help people um, lift off the causal body. Do you know what the causal body is? Okay, I have some descriptions. It is your manifestor. It is how you cause your new life. You have brand new connections that need to move into place for your real life and real living situation with each other. So I'll give you an idea from the past. We'll talk about childhood. Anyone ever be a child so soldier? Anyone ever join the military when they were 18? What did you go through? You went through basic. What does what do they do in basic? They yell at you. They hammer you here. Boom, 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 boom. And then they say, Are you eyeballing me? Are you eyeballing? Are you eyeballing me? Are you, are you, what are you looking at, soldier? Okay. The same thing happens in marriage. What did you do now? I can't do that. I can't do anything right. Well, I just I just can't do anything right. You know, look what's going on. And they want to lock horns with you. That's your causal body. That's the old causal body. How do you get rid of that? I know how to help you get rid of it. And I teach you what to do. And I teach you and teach you if you need coaching, if you need help with things, if you need how to break out of relationship patterns. Okay. That's what I know. If you want to help yourselves out of some of these, uh, you know, it's not just childhood issues because this pertains also to patterns of how we've related. That's, those are patterns of relationship. How do you shift out of ego and start getting your manifestor going so that you're creating your daily living? So check out my webinar. Check out the online webinar. This is a live one, and you will receive the recording. It's going to be in two parts, too. So the next parts are the following weekend. This is next weekend, February 1st, February 3rd and moving that. So you're here to be lovers. You're not here to be shunted aside or excluded. You are here for the full uni unification of the parts of you that are emotional, the parts of you that are spiritual, the parts of you that are real, the physical, okay? You are a multidimensional being. You have all these parts. This is not a part-time thing. This is how you are all the time. These are the beings you are. And you're here to be lovers. Okay, not part-time lovers. Lovers all the time. It's had to be part-time, but it's not intended to stay that way. This year is a year of unification. And yeah, for some of you, you're hearing physical union. Get your... Get your subtle bodies going so that you can hold the physical union together that you're supposed to. Because even people that are together find that they go through body stuff. I know the body stuff. I know it. I'm doing it. I've been doing it for years. And then you know what happens with me? I get shoved back where I have to go through the cycle again so I can teach another round of it to the next wave of people. That's what happens. So... You know, you don't want to end up feeling like a victim or like someone tricked you or that your perceptions were wrong and, you know, what's going on anyway. I mean, I do hear this from people where at some point they say, wait a minute, I'm getting all confused with this twin flame stuff. Okay. Don't get confused. Get focused. Get focused within Find out how to do it because that's what I teach. And I give you the tools so that you can always do it. Always, always, always. Not, you know, run and see, like, well, which one is it? Or what's happening today? Or what's the cosmic weather? What's going to happen? Okay, who's predicting what? You have to make your own predictions. At some point, you're going you're gonna to have to graduate and you're going to be leaving the old levels. That time is this year. We've planned for it. There are deadlines for this year for which things are expected to happen by. Even if you think it hasn't already happened, this is, these are the times where connecting your subtle bodies is what you should be focusing on. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I will be back with more. Check the links below and check it out. I can be reached at twinflamesmerch.com. 
Twin Flames Merge at Gmail. If you have questions, email me. And my next site, which is getting ramped up here, Twin Flame Body. Thanks so much. Stay devoted to your twin, okay? Thank you for your devotion on this journey. Your twin does love you. I know they have a funny way of showing it, but let's clear that out, okay? Bye.